Hello. My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving the math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 157. And today is our day number 59, our lesson number 59. Let's turn to page number 157, which is why it's important that you have the book in front of you in order for you to be able to follow my work. Problem number 8 is what I'm about to do. Problem number 8. I have a couple of notes here. I don't know what, what good it will be to you, to you, but since I have them, I will share them with you. This is the same problem. This is the exact same problem as, it, as the one that appeared in the, on page 140 of the 10th edition. And when it appeared in the real exam, only 32% of the people, only 32 people of the people, 32 percent of the people, uh, got the correct answer. The rest of them missed it. This is the 10th edition that I'm talking about, the older version of the GRE, and they have taken quite a few questions out of these questions and put them in the new new book, in the revised revised GRE. So anyway, enough said. Let's do it together. Here's the problem. Two minus five x is less than or equal to negative 6x minus 5 over 3. Negative 6x minus 5 over 3. The reason I brought up the, or always bring up this percentage is because it makes it interesting. It tells you where it falls on the level of difficulty. This is considered, uh, it's not really a difficult question, but a lot of people had trouble with it. And there's one big reason why they had trouble with it, why they picked the wrong answer we'll come, when we get to it. I'll point it out to you, obviously. And as a matter of fact, I'll we'll, we'll put it here so that you remember it next time when you deal with it. So let's get going then. Enough said. Somehow we need to multiply, we need to get rid of this 3 from the bottom. Multiply, let's multiply both sides of the inequality. Let's multiply both sides of the inequality by 3. So here is this inequality. Let's multiply it by 3. Now we got a 3 on the bottom, we got 3 on the top. We can get rid of this 3. Let's do this out, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 5 is 15, but it's got a negative in front of it, so it's negative 15x, which we are told is less than, less than or equal to negative of this quantity, 6x minus 5. Now here is where, the, where it gets prickly. How do we get rid of this negative? This negative, in fact, is, technically speaking, strictly speaking, this negative that you see there is actually negative 1. How do we get rid of this negative 1? Well, by multiplying both sides of the inequality by a positive one, or rather negative one. If you multiply both sides of the inequality by negative one, then this negative one times this negative one will become positive one. I'm looking at my notes here to see if that is how I did it. Actually, that is not how I did it here. I did it differently. So let's do it differently. Let's, let's not make it complicated. This is one option. We could multiply both sides of inequality by negative 1. But, but here is the prickly part. Something is wrong here. Something drastically has gone wrong if we were to leave it the way it is. Watch what happens here. Watch what happens. Would you agree that 3 is less than 4? Of course 3 is less than 4. But what happens if I multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 1? by negative 1. N negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 3 is no longer less than negative 4. Negative 3 is in fact more than negative 4. So, so what we learn is that when we, if you multiply if you multiply or divide for that matter or divide both sides of an inequality and I'll get out of your way in a second 
if you were to multiply both sides, if you were to multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, by a negative number, the directions of the direction of the inequality switches. The direction of the inequality switches. This is not true. And neither is this one. Because I multiply because we multiply both sides of the inequality by negative one, you see negative one times negative one will become positive one and then we'll get rid of this negative sign here. This which is what I was trying to achieve. But by virtue of multiplying both sides by negative one, this is no longer true. This this says less than or equal to, we have to switch this to greater than or equal to. This is where people make their mistake, this is where people make their boo-boos, which is the reason why a vast majority of people would pick a wrong answer. Not because it's difficult, just because of this one simple concept. Since we since we talk let me read one more time. It says if you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the, denom the directions of the inequality switches. Now I'm going to show you the scenario where we divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number. Which one happens? Would you agree that 10 is less than 12? Of course 10 is less than 12. Would you, if I were to divide both sides of the inequality, let's say, let's say by 2, I'm, I'm dividing both sides of the inequality by 2, but because we are dividing both sides of the inequality by a positive 2, this thing is still valid. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 is still less than 6. This thing is still valid. But what happens? But, what, but watch what happens if you were to divide both sides of the inequality instead of a positive 2, a negative 2. Oh, Jesus. A negative 2. Now, since we are dividing both sides of the inequality by a negative 2, 10 divided by negative 2 is a negative 5, which is no longer smaller than a negative 6. Negative 5 is in fact, negative 5 is in fact greater than negative 6. That's what you have to remember. So you can do anything you one more time I'm going to say it. You can do anything at you can do anything at all that you want to do with inequality. Anything at all. You can add the same number on both sides of the inequality. You can subtract same numbers from both sides of the inequality. You can multiply or divide both sides, both, both sides of the inequality by the same number as long as it's a positive number. But if you, if you were to multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, make sure you switch the directions. That's all it is. That's all there is. So since I started out with this mess, I'm going to finish this thing up. And then I'm going to do it the way actually I had intended in my notes here. I'm going to do it one more time. But let me finish it up the way we, finished, we started here. So the first thing you have to remember is that we switched the side. We switch, switch, switch the. Cannot speak. We switch the directions of the inequality. In the original inequality that is given to us, we are told that the quantity on the left hand side is less than the quantity on the right hand side by the virtue of by the virtue of multiplying both sides of the inequality by a negative one. We have to switch the directions. Now it is greater than or equal to, not less than or equal to. Now why did we multiply it by negative 1 both sides? Because this negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 and we get rid of it now. It's gone. So all that we left here on this side is 6x minus 5 which we, which we know is greater than or equal to. Actually I did not achieve anything at all. I'm just... I did not achieve anything at all because now I have to deal with the bloody negative on this side. I don't know why I'm doing this thing. So negative 1 times, we could have left it here and done the same exact bloody thing that we're doing it here on that side, which is what I'm going to do in a, in a second, which is what I had intended to do, in my, which, which is why I, what I had done in my notes. I wasn't thinking. So negative 1 times 6 is negative 6, and negative, negative times negative is positive, and 1 times 15 is 15. Let's get rid of this, let's, let's, let's get rid of this uh, uh, 6x from, both, uh, from this side by subtracting 6x from both sides of the inequality. That's how we say it, by subtract, don't just say subtract 6x, subtract 6x from what? You have to say subtract 6x from both sides of the inequality. Or if it were equality, you would say subtract both sides of the equation. So this is a negative 6, this is a positive 6, which, is, which was the whole point. It drops out, and we, here positive 15 and a negative 6 will give us positive 9x 
I want to get rid of this 6, bring it on that side, let's add 6 to both sides. So now we have now we have a negative 6, now we have a negative 6 and a positive 6, a negative 6 and a positive 6 drops out, and here we have negative 5 and a positive 6 giving, it, giving us a positive 1. Let's divide both sides by 9, and voila. The 9 drops out, and we are left with x is greater than or equal to positive 1 over 9. Even though when the quantity is positive, you don't actually have to write positive, but in a situation like this, it is a wise idea to actually keep track, just to make it uh, conspicuous that it is in fact positive. That's it, that's our answer. They give you five answer choices, obviously, and our job is to pick one graph that makes sense. And the graph that makes sense, which shows that x is positive, is a positive quantity. In the first graph, it starts out at a positive, and it goes into negative territory. In the second graph, I'm going to show you one by one. Here's the first one. In A, it's in A, it starts out at positive, but then it ends up in a negative territory, which in fact is not true. In B, it starts out in a negative territory. Our, our x is all positive. Positive, positive x is greater than or equal to positive one. That's wrong too. The correct answer is C. The correct answer is C. I need the room. I need the room badly, so I need to raise the stuff. But I don't want to raise anything, so I'm just going to leave it there. The answer is C. There is a zero. That's your answer. It goes on forever. It doesn't end. Now let's talk about the significance of this 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 dot here very quickly. Okay, again, listen very carefully so that uh, so that you, you remember it. It says that this quantity is less than or equal to this quantity. Instead of being less than or equal to, had it been simply less than, less than less greater than greater than and greater than then instead of this circle being closed it would have been an open circle that's all open circle means that it does not include that endpoint but because it is less than or equal to greater 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 than or equal to we have to close this circle that's all that's it we're done I'm going to erase this part here because we are done and I'm going to quickly redo the problem so that, uh, so that it does not end up getting done in a nonsensical way like the way I did it. So let's just leave the negative sign here. So this is negative 1, negative 1 times negative 6 is negative 1 times 6, 6x is negative 6x, negative 1 times negative 5. So what it is is this, what it is is negative 1 times 6x minus 5 negative 1 times 6x is negative 6x negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5 so what we, and here we end up with 6 minus 3 times 2 is 6 and 3 times 5 is negative 15 bring it down here let's add 6x to both sides so we can get rid of this 6x let's subtract 6 from both sides Let's subtract 6 from both sides, nothing has changed so far. And this positive 6 and negative 6 drop out. Negative 15x plus a positive 6x gives us negative 9x, which we are told is less than or equal to. This negative 6x and positive 6x will drop out. Positive 5 and a negative 6 is negative 1. Now watch what happens. Now we're going to multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 1. Same thing as we did before. Negative 1 times negative 9 will give us positive 9x. And now the direction switches. You see? Direction switches. And negative times negative is positive 1. And of course divide both sides by 9. Both sides of the inequality by 9. We, and we end up as x being less, more than or equal to positive 1, 9. Same as before. That's all. That's all.
Which means you raise the stop part here. I'm going to quickly I'm going to quickly give you homework for tomorrow. I want you to do one more problem for tomorrow. And here's the problem. 3 minus 7x. 3 minus 7x is less than or equal to 2x minus 3 over negative 2. This is your homework. It is not in the book. This is an extra, extra question, a bonus question. <coughs> but the answers to this question are the exact same answers, exact five answers that you see in the book. I want you to do it on your own and compare your work, work against what I'm going to do tomorrow on day number 60. Alright? I'll see you then. Bye.